In our study of the Gospel according to John, we will examine John chapter 4 from verse 27 to 30. And at this point, his disciples came, and they marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no one said, What do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and said to the men, Come, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. That I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering that I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for. The attitude of the disciples upon seeing the Lord Jesus Christ conversing with a woman was that of shock and amazement. There are two reasons for this double shock. First, the Jews had much contempt for the Samaritans. But yeah, the Lord was not just conversing with a Samaritan. He was also speaking publicly with a woman. And what's more, he was showing her the way of true worship of God. He was unraveling the revelation of God to a woman, a Samaritan woman. Talking publicly with a woman was directly contrary to the rabbinic precepts. The words of the law were to be burnt rather than taught to a woman. A man should not speak in public even to his own wife. As a matter of fact, one of the daily thanksgivings was, Blessed art thou, O Lord, who has not made me a woman. One of the miracles of the Lord's ministry was to break down the wretched rabbinical prejudice against the spiritual capacities of a woman and the ancient folly which supposed that she contaminated their sanctity. One of the principal work of Jesus Christ was to lift the woman to her true position by the side of man. Jesus gave honor to the complementary role of the woman as a help meet for the man. Women were his most faithful disciples. They ministered to him of their substance. They shared his miraculous healing, feeding, and teaching. They anointed his feet. They wept over his agony. They followed him to the cross. They were the first eyewitness of his resurrection. They greeted him as the risen Lord. They received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In participating in the riches of Christ, there is neither male or female. Both are one in him. Galatians chapter 3 verse 28, there is neither Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. No other worldview accords dignity, honor, and respect to women other than the Christian worldview. The teachings of Christ set the woman free from the hyperinflated male chauvinism as a result of the curse of sin. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 16, to the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire 
shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. In our world today, we see the effects of the curse of sin all around us. Women are seeking to usurp the authority of the man and to walk contrary to his leadership. Men are not loving the woman as the weaker vessel, but rather exercising an overtly demeaning and domineering rulership over the woman, even to deny her existence. But in Christ, this tension is taken away. The curse is lifted. The woman respects and honors and defers to the man in matters of authority. And the man loves the woman just as Christ loves the church. Also, in the spirit of love, the man and the woman submit to one another, preferring each other out of reverence for Christ. This attitude of meekness is at the heart of the gospel. So when the disciples of Jesus came, the woman then left her water pot. She went her way into the city to bear witness to the people of what she had just experienced. The water pot left behind was the pledge of her return. So she ran into the city and announced, Come, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? In doing this, the woman, in a certain sense, becomes the first evangelist and missionary of the Messiah, who goes into a city and draws all men to come and hear the Messiah speak. She had come into contact with the Son of God. The hidden secrets of her life had been revealed to her. Her heart was set aflame with fresh joy and hope like never before. She had stood and conversed with God, her creator, the fountain of life himself. Hence, she was not afraid in the first gush of her newfound joy to brave the unflattering scorn of the man to whom such a confession was made. And then, in most natural and appropriate fashion, she added, could this be the Christ? She knows that he is the Christ, but she desires that her kinfolks would come to the like conclusion with herself. The Samaritan woman had received a touch from the Savior. Her heart is overflowing with joy. Jesus had talked with her, although exposing her past and current sinful life. He gives her a renewed hope, and with it, a sense of dignity, self-worth, and restoration of a battered life. The light of Jesus shines to the weakest and the lowest. He raises up and makes whole again. Has the Savior touched you? Let us pray. Shackled by a heavy burden, underneath a load of guilt and shame, then the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I am no longer the same. Since I met this blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout it while eternity rolls. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. And now I know. He touched me and made me whole. And the fellowship of his suffering being conformed unto his death, that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for. I've been a 
apprehended for being conformed unto his death that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for.